One of the most important causes of low T3, issues with the thyroid gland, are the most common cause of low thyroid conditions. This is because if your thyroid gland isn't functioning, it won't be able to do its job, which is to create thyroid hormones. If your thyroid is unable to create thyroid hormones, the thyroid levels in your blood will drop and you will develop hypothyroidism. Therefore, in order to protect your T3 levels and make sure you feel your very best, the top issue on this list is issues with the thyroid gland. This idea is rather simple, but how your body produces T3 is more complicated. The numbers reveal something very interesting. The thyroid gland produces most of its thyroid hormone as T4, which can range from 80 to 90% depending on the study. This leaves only about 10 to 20% of thyroid hormone produced daily, which is the amount produced by the thyroid gland. Although the thyroid gland isn't a major producer of T3, it is a major producer of the thyroid hormone that will eventually become T3, which is why, despite the fact that it may seem counterintuitive, thyroid gland problems do cause low T3. This brings us to number two, which is decreased T4 to T3 conversion. If you are in good health, you should be able to produce approximately 30 micrograms of T3 thyroid hormone per day. Of these 30 micrograms, only approximately five are produced directly by the thyroid gland. The remaining 25 micrograms are produced through the T4 to T3 conversion process. It could take a few repetitions to fully understand this, but the majority of thyroid hormone generated by the thyroid gland is in the T4 form, and the majority of T3 produced by the body is produced through the conversion of T4 into T3. Thus, if you need to go back to thyroid conversion for a moment, don't be afraid to rewind and watch this again. Your body has the ability to produce T3 when and only when it needs it. But there is a major issue with this conversion process. A variety of conditions can interfere with it and act to either prevent it from occurring or significantly slow it down. This conversion process takes place when the body uses special enzymes to take iodine molecules off the T4 compound, which then turns it into T3 thyroid hormone. Carbohydrate and calorie restriction are two of the main causes of reduced T4 to T3 conversion. Whether you're reducing your intake of carbohydrates because you're on a ketogenic or carnivorous diet, or you're cutting back on calories to lose weight, these conditions can both slow down thyroid conversion and result in low T3. What exacerbates this issue even more is the fact that you would never be aware of it if you only looked at typical thyroid lab tests is sinister. The only method to detect problems with thyroid conversion is to examine free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. However, since the majority of T3 in your body is produced during this conversion process and problems with it occur frequently, this is not a common reason for low T3. Therefore, statistically speaking, if you have low T3, you should look into this first. The third condition on the list, known as relative low T3, or thyroid resistance, is the next place to look. Before we go into this, Let's quickly review. Low T3 results from insufficient thyroid hormone production by the thyroid gland, and low T3 results from the body's inability to convert T4 into T3. But what if your cells are resistant to the thyroid hormone T3? In that case, you won't experience low T3 levels in your blood per C. Instead, you'll experience a functional low T3-like syndrome. To put it another way, you may technically have enough T3 in your system, but it might as well not be there because your cells are unable to use it. This condition is known as thyroid resistance, and it's becoming more and more common as a cause of thyroid dysfunction. The other resistant syndromes, such as insulin resistance, leptin resistance, and even progesterone resistance, that you presumably already know about aren't all that different from this one. The primary distinction is that, unlike some of these other conditions, thyroid resistance isn't as well known or researched. However, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it's more common than we initially believed. The best way to determine whether you have thyroid resistance is to rule out all other possible causes first. Once you've done that, you can determine whether or not your symptoms persist. 
If they do and everything else appears to be in order, thyroid resistance may be the main problem. First, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make so. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow that said back to the video. The fourth item on the list consists of ailments or long-term medical issues. Let's pretend for a moment that your thyroid gland is operating at optimal capacity, converting T4 into T3 without any problems, and that your cells are fully responsive to T3 thyroid hormone. However, and this is a big but, you also suffer from other health issues, such as obesity, elevated blood pressure, or cholesterol conditions that are either acute or chronic and persistent may have an adverse effect on your thyroid blood test. Another prevalent cause of low T3 is a disorder known as nonthyroidal sickness, about which doctors are unsure of the exact nature. Some medical professionals will argue that low T3 is a typical physiological reaction to these conditions, but others, including myself, believe there is more to it than this. The real question is whether to treat someone with low T3 who has a non-thyroidal cause or to simply keep an eye on their lab results. I know what to do. Ignore your thyroid and take care of those other underlying chronic medical illnesses so that they can ease strain on your thyroid. It's unclear if using T3 is a smart idea if you have this condition. If you're listening to this and taking three or five different prescription medications, there's a good chance that changing your lifestyle will help you stop taking one or more of them. Simple lifestyle changes like eating a different diet, exercising more frequently, managing your stress, and getting more sleep can all help you improve your health and reverse these chronic medical conditions. The best part is that I have free information that will walk you through each and every one of those steps. Therefore, if you believe that your medical condition is the root of your thyroid issue, Make sure to take care of those other ailments before worrying about whether or not taking thyroid medication will be beneficial in your particular case. Nutrient inadequacies come in at number five on the list. When we examine closely at the processes the body goes through to convert T4 into T3, we find that numerous vitamins and minerals are needed at each stage. As you might expect, this means that your body will struggle to produce enough T3 if any of these vitamins or minerals are lacking. Consider the production of thyroid hormone. As I mentioned earlier, low T3 can be a symptom of thyroid gland issues. This is true. Even though autoimmune diseases are the most common cause of direct thyroid gland issues, nutrient deficiencies associated with Hashimoto thyroiditis are still very common. For example, the thyroid gland needs iodine, iron, and tyrosine to produce thyroid hormone. While tyrosine deficiencies are uncommon, iodine and iron deficiencies are. These are only the nutrients needed for the body to produce thyroid hormone. Other minerals, such as zinc and selenium, are needed for the body to convert T4 into T3. And according to research, 40% of Americans don't get enough vitamin A from their diet. 12% of the population, is at risk for zinc deficiency, a number that rises to 40% in the elderly, and 17% of premenopausal women are iron deficient. These are not insignificant figures, and there is physiologic evidence to suggest that deficiencies in these nutrients may actually be the cause of low T3. Also, vitamin A is required for thyroid hormone cellular sensitivity. Sixth on the list of causes of low T3 is prescription medicine, which is luckily rather straightforward to switch. As a result, you never want to overlook this possibility. There are countless drugs that can disrupt thyroid function, some of which are prescribed for common ailments like depression or hyperglycemia. These drugs can affect thyroid hormone synthesis, conversion, or even thyroid communication between the brain and the thyroid gland. Prescription drugs have a variety of detrimental effects on the thyroid, and in my view, they are a frequently disregarded factor in low T3. These are only a handful of the medications that I believe you should be aware of because they directly interfere with T4 and T3 levels, beta blockers, antidepressants, and painkillers.
Medication that interferes with TSS levels includes steroids, dopamine, and metformin. Agonists and pharmaceuticals that affect the binding and distribution of thyroid hormones include estrogens found in contraceptives, hormone replacement therapy, HRT, steroids, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen. Examine your prescription drugs if you know or believe that you have low T3. Even if you must take a prescription medication, there are nearly always alternatives available in other drug groups that won't affect your thyroid. In conclusion, understanding the causes of low T3 is crucial for managing your thyroid health effectively. By being aware of these six key factors, you can take proactive steps to support your well-being. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Health Angel Solutions for more valuable insights on thyroid health and overall wellness. Your support helps us continue creating content that empowers your health journey.